Hi everyone, Alex with Beam It Up here. Today we're going to be talking about sprinter arm overs and we're going to create one obviously in Revit MEP. Sprinter arm overs are also called return bend. NFPA 13, the National Fire Protection Association Volume 13, requires you to, whenever you have a raw water source, to come out of the top of the branch in order to go to your sprinter because you could easily come out of the side and then come down to your sprinkler or even come down directly into your sprinkler. That's a very bad practice. Uh, good practice is to provide an arm over or a return bend for two reasons. First reason, you have accumulations over time of sediments like dirt and sludge because remember this is sitting water, this is not circulating, hopefully. It's only circulating if you have a sprinkler operating because you have a fire. But in your typical situation, your best case scenario, this is stagnated water. So you will have a lot of dirt and sediments that could make it all the way down to your sprinkler and clog your sprinkler. A bonus that you get out of this is that you have your, your swing joint here that allows you to rotate and you also have that horizontal piece that can shrink or stretch so you can you, you you can have your sprinkler located exactly where you want it which is typically in the center of the ceiling tile or you know at a, at a very specific location and if you didn't have that it would be harder to do so um, that's definitely good practice a couple of pro tips the maximum unsupported length of that horizontal piece is 24 inches and you should always include a detail in your drawings uh, to specify both the maximum uh, unsupported length and your preferred maximum supported length. Uh, I typically keep it at four feet. Uh, some people allow six feet. So let's do it in Revit. Okay, so let's fire up Revit and let's open our project. In this case, mine's going to be called Sprinkler Tips. And once it's open, if you don't know how to create a project, you can go to the description and there's a video there that shows you how to do that. For now, let's go to our ceiling plans. That video also shows you how to create ceiling plans. And we're going to drop a couple of sprinklers here. I'm going to create a video in the future on how to space sprinklers per NFPA 13 requirements. But for now, let's just drop four sprinklers here. And out of the box, Revit has some sprinklers, but I don't like them too much. So I would recommend you go ahead and go to the internet and go to either a Tyco, Viking, Victolic, or Reliable, or any other manufacturer that you like and download their sprinklers. In this case, I'm gonna use a Viking sprinkler. So I'm gonna go to Insert, and then I'm gonna go to Load Family, and then I'm going to navigate to wherever I have those sprinklers downloaded. And when you're importing your family, make sure you're mindful of yeah, go to your download folder and you'll see what type of family you're inserting. In my case, you know, some, some families use um, a comma separated values, uh, lookup tables, TXT for the types. So in this case, my family contains the RFA uh, file, right, which is the extension for Revit families, but it also contains an associated TXT file that contains all the types. So whenever I click here to import and I say open, it gives me a bunch of options, right? So be careful not to just drag and drop whatever you find there. In my case, I'm just gonna get a 5.6K factor, 155 degrees. This looks okay for me. Notice that it's, uh, it's good for light and ordinary hazard and even for storage. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video. For now, let's just uh, get it in and now it's upgrading to the version that I'm using for this tutorial. And a good tip I'm gonna give you is that sometimes it takes a long time to navigate through your families. 
and a good way of just dropping whatever the, the latest thing that you just imported is coming here to the architecture tab and then you click on component and this is the last thing you brought in so for now I'm gonna have my offset at 10 feet I should have verified my ceiling height before this but it's not a big deal for now I'm just gonna drop it here I'm gonna eyeball it it's not a big deal the important thing here is that you have your sprinters uh, aligned to each other and not except none they're exactly in the center of the tile but you could it just takes time that it that can be used for something else so I'm gonna copy this sprinter 14 feet over and then I'm gonna take these two guys and I'm gonna copy them over 14 feet as well obviously all this would have to be coordinated with your lights with your diffusers distance to walls uh, you know vertical obstructions we'll talk about that in another video for now I just want to have my sprinklers here so let's say I want to tag my ceiling elevation I'll just go here to tag by category and click in here in this case it's just telling me that I don't have that tag loaded so let's just load it let's go to our libraries um, annotations and let's go to architectural here it is a ceiling tag with height I guess this is the one I want let's see yeah so it's giving me eight, eight feet of elevation right and you can tag them all if you went here and you do include linked files whatever but that's not the scope of this video so let's just focus on the task at hand we know we have an acoustical ceiling tile at eight feet of elevation so uh, our four sprinters are a little bit higher than they should be let's change them to eight feet and now we have them at the right elevation let's pipe them all right so let's create our sprinter main I'm gonna hit PI for piping let's make sure we have the correct pipe size the correct offset from the finished floor notice that I'm at the right level level 2 that's where I'm working at and you need to make sure that you have the right pipe type if you don't know how to create a pipe type you can learn how to do so in the description there's a, a video called uh, grooved and threaded which is great for fire protection uh, for now let's just do our pipe make sure you're in the right system I'm in fire protection uh, in fire sp in sprinklers what so let's go ahead and draw our pipe from here to here actually my main is going to be three inches and now let's do a couple of branches right so I'm going to hit PI again and I'm going to keep it at one inch and I'm coming out of here with a groove fitting and what I want you to see is like I'm, I'm gonna go all the way here one of the things that frustrates people a lot is that if uh, if I do PI for piping right and I want to snap to this pipe I get a perfectly horizontal connection with my branch right and that's what people are used to that's what we're expecting now if you if you were to do the same thing but instead of being at nine feet you were at ten feet right a AutoCAD you previous AutoCAD users and, and you know our intuition would tell us that if this gets highlighted it's gonna connect to that pipe and that's still true but the way Revit thinks about it is that if you have this elevation and you have add vertical on it's going to introduce a riser see so if we, if we go to our 3d view this is what happened so we should instead of you know being frustrated by it i'm going to do tr to heal this gap uh, instead of being frustrated about it we can take advantage of it so i'm going to split my windows here so that you see how nice this is for creating arm overs so if i do my piping at let's say nine feet eight inches right and I am tracking the the location of the sprinter and I click here and I click here it automatically created an, ar an arm over for me now since the the inlet of the sprinter is half inch eh, I would have to select these three guys here and change it from half inch to one inch eh, or you could probably build a family that has the, the reducer included this has you know advantages and disadvantages 
And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.